a curved spherical mirror is actually a segment of the surface of a sphere. Its cross section is an arc of a circle. It is generally made up of glass. One surface of the glass is silvered so that reflection takes place from the other surface. The mirror in which the outer surface is silvered so that reflection of light takes place from the inner or the concave surface is called a concave mirror. A concave mirror is also called as converging mirror. On the other hand, a mirror in which the inner surface is silvered so that the reflection of light takes place from the outer or convex surface is called a convex mirror. A convex mirror is also called as diverging mirror. Before we see how reflection takes place in these mirrors, we should get familiar with certain terms related to spherical mirrors. Terms related to spherical mirrors Center of curvature, abbreviated as C. The center of curvature of a spherical mirror is the center of the sphere of which the given mirror can be considered as a part. Radius of curvature, abbreviated as R. Radius of curvature of a spherical mirror is the radius of the sphere of which the given mirror can be considered as a part. Pole abbreviated as P. The center point of a given mirror is known as the pole. Here, P is the pole. Principal axis. The straight line passing through the pole and center of curvature of the mirror is known as principal axis. Line XY is a principal axis. Focus of concave mirror, abbreviated as F. The light rays parallel to the principal axis falling on a concave mirror converge to a point on the principal axis after reflection. This point is called the focal point or the focus of the concave mirror. Focal length. The distance between the focus F and the pole P is called the focal length of the mirror and is denoted by F. For small sized spherical mirrors, the focal length F is half of the radius of curvature, R. That is, F is equal to R by 2. Aperture The diameter of the reflecting surface of the mirror is known as aperture of the mirror. D is the aperture of the mirror. It represents the size of the mirror. The size of the aperture determines the sharpness of image. Smaller the aperture, sharper will be the image. Having learnt about the terms related to spherical mirrors, let us now proceed to understand the concept of convergence and divergence of light by concave and convex mirror. Concave mirror is a converging mirror. Let us hold a concave mirror facing the sun. Try to focus the reflected sun rays on a piece of paper. Move the paper back and forth until a bright, sharp spot of light is seen. This sharp spot of light is nothing but the image of the sun. The distance between the spot of light and mirror is called the focal length of the mirror. The image is formed because the light rays coming from the sun gets reflected and meet at a point. When light rays meet at a point, it is said to converge. When the sun rays are concentrated at a point on the paper for some time, they can burn the paper due to heating. When the light from a source is to be focused on a small spot, a converging mirror is used. Convex mirror is a diverging mirror. Let us consider a beam of light ray falling on a convex mirror. The rays get reflected at the mirror surface and spread away from each other. This is called divergence of rays. When the rays are extended backwards, they appear to come from a point. This point is on the principal axis and is called the principal focus of the convex mirror, denoted as F. When we want to spread light from a source, diverging beam is used. For example, in torches and street lamps, light is spread over a larger area using divergence of light. Before we learn about the image formation by spherical mirrors, let us learn about the representation of images formed by spherical mirrors using ray diagrams. Representation of images formed by spherical mirrors using ray diagrams. When an object is placed in front of a mirror, an image is formed. If we consider an extended object of finite size, each small portion of the extended object acts as a point source. Hence, an infinite number of rays will originate from these points. So, for the sake of clarity, we use only two rays of light starting from the object. Let us understand the rules used for drawing ray diagrams for both concave and convex mirrors. Rules used for drawing ray diagram. Rule 1. In case of a concave mirror, if the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, 
then the reflected ray passes through the focus. Here, the incident ray makes an angle I with the normal. A normal to the surface of the mirror at any point passes through the center of curvature C. The reflected ray makes angle R equal to I with the normal and passes through the focus. In case of a convex mirror, the incident ray of light parallel to the principal axis appear to diverge from the principal focus F on reflection. Rule 2 In case of a concave mirror, if the incident ray passes through the focus, then the reflected ray will travel parallel to the principal axis. In case of a convex mirror, if the incident ray moves towards the mirror in such a way that its extension passes through the focus, then the reflected ray will travel parallel to the principal axis. In both the cases, the incident ray passing or appearing to pass through the focus makes an angle I with the normal at the mirror surface. The reflected ray makes angle R equal to I with the normal and passes parallel to the principal axis. Rule 3. If the incident ray passes through the center of curvature of a concave mirror or is directed in the direction of the center of curvature of a convex mirror after reflection traces the same path. Here, the incident ray strikes normally on the mirror surface. Therefore, reflected ray returns along the same path. Rule 4. A ray of light which is incident at pole P of a concave or a convex mirror is reflected back making the same angle with the principal axis. Here, the incident and the reflected rays follow the laws of reflection at the point P, that is, the point of incidence. Thus, they make equal angles with the principal axis. Image formation by spherical mirrors. Activity. Let us perform an activity to understand the formation of image by concave mirror. Take a concave mirror and try to get an image of a distant object on a white screen. This will give us the approximate focal length of the mirror. Mark the position of the stand such that its pole lies over the line. Draw with a chalk two more lines parallel to the previous line such that the distance between any two successive lines is equal to the focal length of the mirror. These lines correspond to the positions of the points P, that is pole, F, that is focus, and C, that is center of curvature, respectively. Place a candle far beyond the point C. Place a white screen and move it in front of the mirror till you obtain a sharp bright image of the candle flame on it. Observe the image carefully. When the position of the candle between infinity and the center of curvature, the image formed is between focus and center of curvature, the size of the image is diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. When the candle is placed at the center of curvature, the image is formed at the center of curvature. Image is of same size as that of the object and nature of the image is real and inverted. When the candle is placed between focus F and center of curvature C, the image is formed beyond center of curvature. Image is bigger than the object and the nature of the image is real and inverted. When the candle is placed at the focus F, the image is formed at infinity. Image is highly enlarged and the nature of the image is real and inverted. When the candle is placed between the pole and principal focus F of the lens, then the image is behind the mirror. Image is enlarged and the nature of the image is virtual and erect. Assume that an object AB is placed at infinity. Let us consider three rays coming from the object. One along the principal axis and two parallel rays on either side of the principal axis. The ray travelling along the principal axis is incident normally on the mirror and hence retraces its path. The rays parallel to the principal axis pass through the focus after reflection. The three rays meet at the focus and image is formed at that point. The image is real, inverted and highly diminished. Let the object AB be placed in front of a concave mirror at a distance more than the radius of the curvature. The ray AM parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus F after reflection. The ray AN passing through the center of curvature C, retraces its path. The intersection of the two reflected rays gives the image of the tip A of the object. Considering rays coming out from different points on the object, the images of these points are obtained. Thus, the image A-B- is obtained between C and F, which is real 
diminished and inverted. Let the object AB be placed at the center of curvature C. The ray AD parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus F. The ray AE passing through the focus travels parallel to the principal axis as ray EA dash. The two reflected rays intersect at point A dash. A real and inverted image A dash B dash is obtained at C. The size of the image is the same as that of the object. The object AB is now placed between F and C. The rays AD and AE after reflection intersect in point A dash. Inverted image A dash B dash is obtained beyond C. This image is real and enlarged. When the object is placed at the focus, the rays AE and AD transverse parallel to each other after reflection. The image of the object is formed at infinity. The image is highly enlarged, real and inverted. Let the object be placed between the pole P and focus F of the mirror. The ray AE after reflection passes through the center of curvature C. Another ray, say AM, gets reflected along MN. The two reflected rays EC and MN appear to come from point A dash. Thus, the image A dash B dash of the object is formed. The image is behind the mirror, virtual, enlarged and erect. Let us tabulate our observations for the image formation by a concave mirror according to the position of the object. Position of the image, size of the image and nature of the image. When the object is placed at infinity, the image is formed at focus, size of the image is highly diminished, nature of the image is real and inverted. When the position of the object between infinity and the center of curvature, the image formed is between focus and center of curvature, the size of the image is diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. When the object is placed at the center of curvature, the image is formed at the center of curvature. Image is of same size as that of the object and nature of the image is real and inverted. When the object is placed between focus F and center of curvature C, the image is formed beyond center of curvature. Image is bigger than the object and the nature of the image is real and inverted. When the object is placed at the focus F, the image is formed at infinity. Image is highly enlarged and the nature of the image is real and inverted. When the object is placed between the pole and principal focus F, of the lens, then the image is behind the mirror, image is enlarged and the nature of the image is virtual and erect. The distance of the image depends upon the distance of the object from the mirror and the focal length of the mirror. Let us see some of the uses of concave mirrors. Concave mirrors are used as shaving mirror to see an enlarged image of the face. The makeup mirrors are also made up of concave mirrors. Dentists use concave mirrors fitted in a frame with a long handle to see an enlarged image of the tooth to detect the defect in the tooth easily. Concave mirrors are used as reflectors in headlights of vehicles. The reflectors of torches and searchlights also make use of concave mirrors. Let us perform an activity to understand the formation of image by convex mirror. Make sure that you perform this activity in a dark room. Place a convex mirror of focal length 10 cm on a stand. Keep a lighted candle on one side of the mirror at any distance, say 20 cm from the mirror. Place a screen in front of the mirror. Now, move the screen forward and backward and try to obtain the image of the candle flame on the screen. You will observe that there is no image of the candle flame formed on the screen. But if you look into the mirror by adjusting your eye, a small image of the candle and its flame is seen. Since you can see the image of the candle and its flame only when you looked into the mirror, the image observed is virtual. The image formed has the flame on the same side as that of the candle. Thus, the image is erect. But if we compare the size of the image with the candle, we find that the size of the image is small, that is, the image is diminished. Thus, we can conclude that 
the image formed by the convex mirror is always virtual, erect and smaller in size independent of the distance between the object and mirror. Let us consider two positions of an object to study its ray diagram. Let the object, that is, the pencil, AB, be placed in front of the convex mirror anywhere between the pole and infinity. Let us consider a ray, AD, travelling parallel to the principal axis. It gets reflected as a ray, DM. According to the rules, the ray appears to come from focus F. The other ray, AG, travelling towards the centre of curvature C, gets reflected along the incident path as ray, GA. The two reflected rays, DM and GA, do not actually meet at a point but appear to meet at point A dash behind the mirror. Thus, A dash is the virtual image of the point A. Hence, A dash B dash is the virtual image of the object AB. The image is situated between the pole and the focus. The image is virtual, upright and diminished. If the object is situated at infinity, the rays coming from the object are such that they are parallel to the principal axis. The rays diverge on reflection and a virtual, highly diminished image is seen at the focus F. Hence, for all the positions of an object in front of a convex mirror, the image formed is on the other side of the mirror between focus F and pole P. Let us tabulate our observations for the image formation by a convex mirror according to the position of the object, position of the image, size of the image, and nature of the image. When the object is placed anywhere between the pole P and infinity, then the image is formed behind the mirror between P and F. The image is diminished and nature of the image is virtual and erect. When the object is placed at infinity, then the image is formed behind the mirror at the focus F. The image is highly diminished and nature of the image is virtual and erect. Having learnt about the formation of image in plane and spherical mirrors, can you tell which mirror will give you a full-size image of a large object? Well, to know this, let us perform an activity. Activity Try to get a full-size image of a distant tree in a plane mirror. Do you get the full-size image of the tree? No. In the plane mirror, you will not get the full-size image. Let us take another plane mirror of different size and try to get a full-size image of the tree. Do you succeed this time? No. Now, try to get the full-sized image of a tree in a concave mirror. Do you get the full-size image of the tree? The size of the image is diminished and it is inverted. Repeat the same steps with a convex mirror. This time, you will be successful. It is because the convex mirror has a greater field of view. Let us study some more uses of convex mirrors. Uses of convex mirror Convex mirror always produces a smaller, virtual and erect image of an object. Hence, it is used as a side view mirror in vehicles. It forms images of the vehicles that are spread over a relatively larger area providing a wider field view. Also, convex mirrors are used for security purpose in shops, malls, etc. Sign Convention for Reflection by Spherical Mirrors We have seen that images are formed at different distances from a mirror depending on the distance of the object from the mirror. The distances are measured using new sign convention. According to it, the pole P of the mirror is taken as the origin. The principal axis is taken as x-axis, x, x dash of the coordinate system. The conventions are, the object is always placed to the left of the mirror. This means light from the object falls on the mirror from the left hand side. All distances parallel to the principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror. All the distances measured to the right of the origin, that is along positive x-axis are taken as positive, while the distances measured to the left of the origin, that is along the negative x-axis are taken as negative. Distances measured perpendicular to and above the principal axis are taken as positive. Distances measured perpendicular to and below the principal axis are taken as negative. The sign conventions are applied to obtain mirror formula. Let us study more about the mirror formula. Mirror formula and magnification. Mirror formula. The distance of the object from the pole of the mirror is called the object distance. It is designated by letter U. 
the distance of the image from the pole of the mirror is called the image distance. It is designated by letter V. The distance between the pole and the principal focus is designated by letter F. The relation between the object distance, image distance and the focal length of the mirror is called mirror formula. It is given as 1 divided by V plus 1 divided by U is equal to 1 divided by F. This formula is valid in all situations for all spherical mirrors for all positions of the object. We have seen how object distance, image distance and the focal length are connected. Now, let us study more about the relation between the object and image sizes. Magnification We have seen that the size of an image is different for different object distances. The image is magnified in some cases and diminished in some cases. A term magnification is defined as the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object. Thus, the magnification by spherical mirror is given by magnification is equal to height of the image divided by height of the object. Magnification gives the relative extent to which the image of an object is magnified with respect to the object size. Magnification is usually denoted by the letter M. If H is the height of the object and H' dash is the height of the image, then the magnification M produced by a spherical mirror is given by M is equal to H' dash divided by H. The object is usually placed above the principal axis, hence is taken to be positive. The height of image should be taken as positive for virtual images and negative for real images. The magnification M is also related to the object distance U and image distance V. It can be expressed as M is equal to H dash divided by H equal to negative V divided by U. A negative sign in the value of the magnification indicates that the image is real. A positive sign in the value of the magnification indicates that the image is virtual. Numerical Problems 1. An object 3 cm in size is placed at 20 cm in front of a concave mirror of focal length 12 cm. At what distance from the mirror should a screen be placed in order to obtain a sharp image? Also find the nature and size of the image. Solution let us first write the given data using sign convention. Object size H is equal to 3 cm. As a convention, the object is always placed left to the mirror. Hence, a can as negative. Object is placed at 20 cm in front of the concave mirror. Therefore, object distance U is equal to minus 20 cm. The focal length of a concave mirror is negative. The focal length of a given concave mirror is 12 cm. Therefore, focal length F is equal to minus 12 cm. We have to find the image distance V and the image size H dash. Let us use the mirror formula. 1 divided by V plus 1 divided by U is equal to 1 divided by F, which can be written as 1 divided by V is equal to 1 divided by F minus 1 divided by U. Let us substitute the given values of F and U. 1 divided by V is equal to 1 divided by minus 12 minus 1 divided by minus 20 is equal to minus 5 plus 3 divided by 60 which is equal to minus 2 divided by 60. Therefore, V is equal to minus 30 cm. Hence, the screen should be placed at a distance of 30 cm in front of the mirror. As the image can be obtained on the screen, it is a real and inverted image. Now, the magnification M is given by M is equal to H dash divided by H, which is equal to minus V divided by U. Therefore, H dash is equal to minus V divided by U multiplied by H. Substituting given values of U, V and H, we have H dash is equal to minus minus 30 multiplied by 3 divided by minus 20, which is equal to 90 divided by minus 20, 
which is equal to minus 4.5. Hence, the height of the image is 4.5 cm. Now, the magnification M is equal to minus 4.5 divided by 3, which is equal to minus 1.5. Hence, the image is real, inverted and enlarged. 2. An object is placed at a distance of 10 cm from a convex mirror of focal length 15 cm. Find the position and nature of the image. Solution. Let us first write the given data using new sign convention. As a convention, the object is always placed to the left side of the mirror. Hence, according to sign convention, the distance of the object is taken as negative. Object is placed at 10 cm in front of the convex mirror. Therefore, object distance u is equal to minus 10 cm. The focal length of a convex mirror is always positive. The focal length of the given convex mirror is 15 cm. Therefore, focal length f is equal to 15 cm. We have to find out position, that is, v of the image. Let us use the mirror formula. 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon u plus 1 upon v, which can be written as 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f minus 1 upon u. Substituting the given values, we get 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon 15 minus 1 upon minus 10, which is equal to 1 upon 15 plus 1 upon 10, which is equal to 2 plus 3, the whole divided by 30, which equals to 5 by 30. Therefore, 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon 6. Therefore, v is equal to 6 centimeters. 